Tavoli News today, new Premier elected in Makira Ulawa province. Planting Material Network supports farmers across Solomon Islands. Solomon Pro Fishing and Dive Shop opens doors in Munda. Media Association of Solomon Islands and BBC Media Action commemorate World Press Freedom Day. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Osifello. Makira Ula province has a new premier. He is Stanley Siapu, the MPA elected for Santa Ana Ward. Clerk to Makira Ulao Provincial Assembly Clement Rohorua says two candidates were nominated as of yesterday and elections took place at 9 a.m. this morning. The two candidates contesting are Stanley Siapu and Donald Tahani, the newly elected MPA for Arosi West Ward. Stanley Siapu polled a majority of 14 votes and Donald Tahani polled a total of six votes. The swearing-in of the new executive members for the 11th Assembly of the Makira Ulawa province will be held on Monday, followed by the election for the Deputy Speaker. The Planting Material Network, a farmer network managed by the Custom Garden Association, has been a lifeline for farmers since its inception in 1995. Seeds are cultivated and multiplied at centres in Honiara and beyond, ensuring a steady supply of vital resources for local farmers. Today, a Japanese volunteer, Mr. Ogushi Hayato, is supporting the Custom Garden in managing the network's database. Uh, no solo, uh, population increase uh, rapidly. And uh, now the uh, yeah, gardening or agriculture uh, important more important now. So custom garden, yeah, yeah, keep good hmm? influence, <laughs> yeah, infl uh, or yeah, have good inf influence for uh, for. The farmers. Yeah. So planting material network, uh, membership. Yeah. So uh, now uh, I think uh, over over uh, six thousand members, and then uh, Mifala, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Orketa enter time. Orketa enter uh, membership. Uh, Mifala give him seed. I think over oh, 1,000 one seeds Mifala give him, distribute. It, it is very uh, big number. The Custom Garden Association has cultivated over 2,000 seedlings. This initiative plays a crucial part in supporting farmers across the country, providing them with the resources they need to thrive. So it's very uh, easy, <laughs> yeah, simp simple. Uh, make them, uh, make them members bigger. Yeah. So number now uh, the pace, uh, increase pace uh, is very high level. So before, uh, sorry, from 2020, now very highest speed. So me one day uh, making more members. So making more members, uh, yeah, more good influence for solo. Yeah, I think. And the custom for custom garden, it's uh, about mission. So uh, yeah, it's connect to our mission. So I want to uh, increase the number of. Uh, PMN, yeah, PMN members, yeah. Solomon Airlines has suspended all services to Ramata Airport until further notice due to the runway failing to meet minimum safe operating conditions. 
CEO Mr. Sean Teo emphasized safety as the top priority and expressed regret for any inconvenience caused to customers. The airline hopes to resume operations once conditions are restored. A new fishing and dive shop has been officially launched today in Munda, Western Province. Solomon Pro Fishing and Dive Shop viewed the reopening of Munda International Airport as encouraging given the popularity of the Western Province as a tourist destination. Shop owner Daniel Duke in an earlier interview with Tavoli News says he is quite happy to be able to run a fishing and dive shop in Munda to provide employment opportunities and also to support the local economy in the Western Province. So we've got another venture as well, which is um, sort of like a village infrastructure project. So building, we're building up um, little opportunities in the village for people to, to, to earn wages, weekly wages. Um, and so it's sort of like an uh, NGO style um, development initiative. And, um, so we're sort of trying to get that off the ground at the moment as well. So tick tick blow me for the by me for the training or get a lot how for care for reef. How for uh, harvesting coral, how for growing more coral, um, then start planting new reef, new new corals around a little bit. So um, him now I think he's looking for that by by we try to do so. Then after all the training, start paying wage for the work of God. Well, after doing, yeah, him now think this time. So, but everything him him be um, connected, shop him connected law. That one that one connected law shop to the business and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The opening of Solomon Pro Fishing and Dive Shop was witnessed by Munda residents who turned out in numbers for the inaugural ceremony. The Western Province is known as the tourism hub of Solomon Islands and is well known for its beautiful islands and dive spots. Solomon Airlines flies a weekly international route through Munda every Saturday. The Media Association of Solomon Islands, with the support from BBC Media Action, hosted a breakfast function to mark World Press Freedom Day. The World Press Freedom Day is celebrated every year to commemorate the fundamental principles of press freedom, evaluate the state of press freedom globally, defend the media from attacks on their independence, and pay tribute to journalists who have lost their lives in the line of duty. In Solomon Islands, where conflict zones are absent, the challenges like climate change, environmental degradation, and socio-economic disparities persist, the role of journalists becomes even more significant. They are the voice of the people, bringing to light the issues that affect our communities, our environment, and our future. Through their dedication and commitment to truth, they provide us with valuable insights and perspectives, empowering us to make informed decisions and take meaningful action. It is also essential to recognize the crucial role played by public relations officers in facilitating the flow of information between organizations and the media. Your collaboration and partnership with journalists are instrumental in ensuring that accurate and timely information reaches the public. By working together, we can foster greater transparency, accountability, and public trust. The past years have been a struggle for media organizations navigating through the events of the 2021 riots, the COVID-19 pandemic, the 2022 earthquake, and political disrup disruptions. Despite these challenges, our media professionals have demonstrated remarkable resilience and dedication to their craft. Their coverage of events such as the Pacific Games, the joint elections, and the election of the Prime Minister has been exemplary, providing the public with vital information and fostering greater civic engagement. However, we cannot ignore the challenges and obstacles that our media organizations face on a daily basis. Limited resources, time constraints, and the rapidly changing media landscape present significant challenges to their operations. Many newsrooms operate with skeleton staff, stretched to the limits, yet they persevere, driven by a deep sense of duty and commitment to the public good. 
The media landscape in Solomon Islands presents unique challenges, limited capacity, constrained budgets, and re reliance on word of mouth communication are just some of the obstacles that journalists and media organizations struggle with on a daily basis. While international support, such as that provided by the British government through BBC Media Action, is invaluable, more must be done to ensure the sustainability and resilience of local media outlets. This year, Masi says the event is celebrated with a breakfast function with a low-key event intended to provide journalists and their peers with a moment to unwind following the intense election coverage. At the same time, BBC Media Action Project Manager Deepak Batari commends the journalists from Solomon Islands for their dedication and passion towards their work, despite working with limited resources. So for BBC Media Action and other media development partners here, we are all with you. ABC ID is here, Internews is here, we have British High Commissioner, we have American uh, here and New Zealand High Commissioner here. So we have all the media partners that want to uh, help you, assist you, encourage you for your all the work that you are doing. I have seen like a single mother of four, five, six years, six children daily going to the reporting, covering morning from five to late to the, till the 11 in this country. I haven't seen this anywhere else. This is so much I'm proud of. This day, actually, you should give up and applause for yourself. You have done a really great job informing <laughs> your fellow citizens. Really, a newsroom of only one or two people it's constantly producing four, five pages of newspapers, six pages of newspapers, and lots of online, as well as like radio content, 16 hours of radio content. Unbelievable. You should be proud of yourself. I have never seen that much, never in my life. So Solomon Islands, journalist, I'm, I feel very blessed, very proud of all of you, and I hope that you will continue working and supporting your audience, your Solomon Islanders, and people need you more than before. There is so much of misinformation, disinformation around here. We need to work on that. People regard us as like, they look us, these are the people who will give us right information. At the end, they will come to you. There is so much easy nowadays to create a fake information just to write something on social media. But at the end, people look at you. So please, be patient, be courageous, do what you are doing, and we all are there to support you. Thank you so much. The theme for this year's World Press Freedom Day is a press for the planet, journalism in the face of the environmental crisis. We extend our best wishes to all journalists in the media industry on this World Press Freedom Day.